All right, everybody, the Texas Longhorns, we defeated the Houston Cougars 31-24. This is not the outcome that we wanted. Uh, this is going to be an instant overreaction, so we are overreacting, and it is very instant. <clears throat> I will be completing the every play after this video, so go ahead and drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then comment down below your thoughts on the game as well. Uh, Want to hear them? Uh, I, I'm, sure there, I'm sure there's a lot of good ones out there. Now, at the end of the day, a win is a win, but there were, there were a lot of issues, and we got to talk about them in this video. Uh, we're going to start off with Steve Sarkeesian and his, I like that, that fourth down, going for it with, where you're just, it, it's, it didn't make any sense. Like, what are you doing? Like, that was not a good, I don't, there was a chance that that play could have worked, but the chances are just so small. If you're going to go for it on fourth down, go for it. Put the offense out there. You know, try, like doing that, trying to catch them off, uh, off guard and all that stuff. Uh, especially, I think, what was it? at the what, what did we have at that point? Was it... Yeah, hold on. Let me... Yeah, we had a 14-point lead. 21-7. So, it's just... it Like, what, what are we doing here? And then, here's the problem, is how that affected the momentum. And... It, it feels like Steve Sarkeesian, before I go to the how it affected the momentum, it feels like Steve Sarkeesian has an inability when we have a good drive. Like that drive, so we had gotten the ball down to the 26. We're almost in the red zone. right? We're right there. You know, we're driving the ball well. Steve Sarkeesian at times, it feels like he has an inability to accept that, hey, we just got to take three points here. And uh, it, it's almost like a sunk, uh, sunken cost fallacy, right? Like you're, you're just – you're – you're you're too lost in losing those four points, but when you got it, like when you like I said, when it's a, you got a two score lead, and you have a chance to put it to three scores, you take that chance all the time, every single time. Then Houston they go they go and they score. Okay, Texas they get the ball back, one horrible play back eight yards, and then we go into the half. Okay, let's come out of the half with neutral momentum, <clears throat> let that momentum die down. Let the stadium kind of cool down over halftime and then come out and play some good clean ball to start. Nope. Houston's going to take a kickoff back to about the 50-yard line, get the momentum right back, and they're going to go and score. And it is now going to be, like, in a, within a blink of the eye, you were, you were sitting there with two minutes and 33 seconds left with a 14-point lead. And now the game is tied. Okay. Now you go down, and what do you do? You go for it on fourth down, incomplete pass. I mean, Adonai Mitchell had no clue that that ball was coming whatsoever. Uh, it just it looked like a almost like a broken play from the beginning. And what do you know? They get the ball back. Now, luckily, we did get a fumble. We did force a fumble, get a field goal, so we were able to you know avoid that being an issue. But that's a momentum that we really. We never experienced a, a point in the game where we did not have a where we were down to Houston, but that could have easily been a point right been the point right there. So we forced the fumble, we go, we kick the field goal. They inter uh, we get the interception. Uh, that was credit to Michael Taft for getting the interception, but at the end of the day, that was almost like a gifted ball. Uh, they were almost in the red zone as well. That's another point where, <clears throat> like Houston, they left some stuff on the table. And really, this is this this was a problem. You go and you look at it; it's ten points in the second half. We were after, yeah, at, after the six minute or after the six minute fifty mark around there, when Houston has the ball and they're starting to drive. We were outscored uh, twenty four to ten from that point. That's how you lose football games. We held on. We escaped in this game. And. To say we escaped in a game against Houston, it just feels dirt. That that feels wrong. Feels dirty. Uh, statistically, some guys had a great had some good games. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, his 100 yard game streak comes to an end, uh, rushing wise. Had 99 yards, was one yard short. So, unless there is a stat correction that comes out and gives him one yard, he is uh, his streak is over. But at the end of the day, who cares? Uh, he had a, he had a good day on the ground. 51 yards to the uh, 51 yards to the air, yeah. Uh, Quinn Ewers, this is an issue. 
He needs to learn how to slide. Like, just flat out. You can't be going uh, 23 for 29. And your, your arm. Your arm is your premium thing. Right? That's what's going to get Quinn Ewers drafted. Right? 23 for 29. He's a... He's been accurate. That's like you're you're you've been lethal with that. And then you're out there running, but it's not just the, I'm fine with the running. Just slide. Protect yourself. And not only protect yourself, but protect the team. The team they need their starting quarterback out there. We have capable backups, but I mean it's just it's different. When you got a guy that's been practicing with the ones. I mean it, it's not it's not rocket science here. You know? You need one guy to be sitting out there practicing with the ones, and these guys, they haven't got a lot of run with the ones. You need that chemistry. And it's just, it sucks. We're going to have, that's going to be something we're going to have to monitor, but you cannot be, it's just when you're going down at the end of the runs, you can't be leading with your right shoulder. You can't. If you're a right arm quarterback, you can't be doing that. If you're a left arm quarterback, you can't be leading with your left shoulder. Not when you're a quarterback that's going to make money by your arm working. If your arm isn't working, it ain't like, what are you doing for us? Quinn Ewers, he's not Michael Vick out there. Now, he can run. And here's where here's where the thing is. that He can run because teams have to respect his arm so much. They have to defend every level of the field. If your arm ain't working, you're not going to get those same runs. So, uh, that's just, that's an issue that I have. Quinn Ewers, he's going to have to start sliding. And... Who knows? Maybe this is maybe this is the one that hurt, uh, does it. We'll have to see how serious that injury is. Adonai Mitchell had a, had one reception and then dipped out. Uh, he had two targets, I think, the entire day. Uh, maybe more. We'll have to see uh, what the actually. Hold on, give me one second, real. And okay, so uh, just a, just a real random note. Uh, CBS Sports has the best box score uh, game tracker in the business. It beats uh, ESPN's. There's multiple times where they have the every plays that. Like the plays listed that Houston doesn't know that or not Houston that uh, tech, uh, ESPN uh, that ESPN doesn't have, and then they also have the targets. But so Adonai Mitchell he was targeted three times and only one reception. That one reception was a touchdown one. It, it just it feels like good things happen when we target him more often. So I I would like to see him get more targets. Xavier Worthy had a great day, seven or uh, seven targets, six receptions, ninety two yards, one touchdown for him as well. That ball was just dropped. That was a, that was an excellent placement. For all the concerns that we've had with Quinn Ewers' long ball accuracy, he, start, he started to have that uh, shirt up. Now, Cedric Baxter, he looked good. He looked good. He's looking healthy. He's kind of kind of showing us why the why the coaching staff had that faith in him as the uh, as a guy that could you know maybe start over Jonathan Brooks, but. Man, to have to have those two backs as your one two punch, that's a that's some fun. Uh some credit to the Houston guys. Donovan Smith had a he had a good day passing. He certainly did in my opinion. Uh I think he could have ran more. That's something that the broadcast mentioned a couple times, but yeah, he could have. The the rush or, well and the credit to the Texas rush defense. Fourteen yards on nineteen carries. Under one yard per carry. That's that's stifling a run. That, that's stifling a rush offense. And honestly, that's that's where we won the game. You can like you can directly point to that saying, if we don't have as good of a run defense as we as we had today, we lose the game. Even at like three yards per carry, I'm not kidding. That's it was that big of a difference. Uh, Houston the receiver. <laughs> This is like this is crazy. Their their total yards on offense, okay? They had three hundred and ninety two yards on offense. Three hundred and seventy eight yards came through the air. So that is because I'm not I'm not that good at math, uh, to be able to do, get the exact percentages. That's ninety six point four percent of the yardage came through the air against Texas. And there's where our other problem is and where the credit goes to Houston. Uh, credit goes to Flapjack. I know his name is Manjack, Joseph Manjack. <clears throat> he had a great game. Uh, hope he's okay. He he looked like he got hit pretty uh pretty hard by Michael Taff at the end there, and 
again, hope he's okay. He looked like he had a little bit of fencing response, which I'm not going to try and, you know, project at what might be the injury. But uh, that's just never a good sign that when you see that. Matthew Golden, that dude is fast. He can return the football. And <clears throat> he almost made us pay uh, a couple times. He actually probably did make us pay a couple times. Two touchdowns on the day for him. 88-yard game. Uh, Flapjack, like I said in the preview, that's their most consistent guy. He was, again, consistent as well. Another six-reception day. He's sitting at six or seven receptions every single game. You can almost book it. Uh, that We got problems. We got problems with our backup defensive backs when, as far as it comes to not letting that ball go over the back of your heads. Uh, teams are going to attack us vertically over the field. Uh, and the problem is this is a momentum thing. This is a, this is a common thing that you saw with Texas today is we were behind the eight ball when it comes to momentum. Uh, outside the first two, first quarter and a, first quarter and a third, I mean, First quarter and third, we had moment. It was all all Texas, all all game. Like it was like, okay, this is about to be a blowout. We're finally going to get to see Arch Manning play. Nope. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is. We're going to have to get that fixed. Uh, not allowing these deep passes. We. They got too many explosive pass plays on against us, and. It's just, look. At the end of the day, there are injuries. Okay, there were injuries that happened. You had, I mean, we're out Catalan. We're, if we're, here's the deal. If we're out Jaron Thompson, we're missing both our starting safeties and both of our uh, starting cornerbacks at one point in the game. But at the end of the day, that's football. You got to play with your backups sometimes. And you got to play with your young guys sometimes. And, uh, you know, I, I just, at the end of the day, man, some of these, some of these guys, they just, they look, uh, they're, they're, they just look like they're not able to keep up with some of these dudes. Now, I, I'll be honest. It, who There's not many people that are going to be able to sit there and keep up with a Matthew Golden, who runs like a – I think he runs like a 10-3-100. So, you know, <laughs> get a pass on Matthew Golden. But there's uh, that Flapjack guy. I, I, again, I know his name is Manjack. But Flapjack, you can't be letting that happen. Can't be letting him go over the top. You can't be letting him run cro- – like. They had a crossing route that ran, that went for like 60-something yards or something like that. Like, we got it on third down, too. So, we got to get that shirt up. But time for PK to step up and get that defensive backfield fixed, specifically the back end. Uh, and we really desperately need to get healthy. Uh, we're, we're missing Ryan Watts. <clears throat> can't wait to get him back. Uh, can't wait to get Catalan back because also, and that's another thing, I think that communication started to – just off my, again, instant reaction. It looked like communication was an issue at times. Uh, there was a touchdown, the first touchdown, I think, you had a Michael Taff. He was pointing to somebody else, like, saying, hey, you had responsibility here. So, we'll see on that. But, as always, Texas won. Uh, not as, well, you know, almost as always. But, Texas won 31-24. And, as always, we're going to give you a little hook. Em, but, yeah, we need to win better. Uh, be better. But I will have the every play out tonight and a more thoughtful reaction tomorrow. So, all right, everybody. Hope you all have a great day. And hook them.